Well, guess what? All of you who are females and are watching this, that's where you stopped, okay? You see, in, in, a, in a human female, what happens is when she starts, when she goes through meiosis one and she gets to the primary oocyte stage it's, or the secondary oocyte stage, she stops. And meiosis two never happens until fertilization. So in other words, whereas in spermatogenesis, as you know, the male is constantly making sperm his entire fer fertile life, the female is really only all of her eggs, which are made at birth, okay? Let's, let's go through the whole development thing. Female is born with ovaries. Her ovaries, all the cells as they're developing, have gone, have, 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 are, are literally waiting to go through meiosis. Once a month, once roughly every 28 days, she'll put a cell through meiosis one. That cell will pop out during the menstrual cycle and it will go into the fallopian tubes. If it does not get fertilized, meiosis is never completed. But if it does get fertilized, now we continue moving on. So before we move on, let's see where, we're, where we are in the ovary. So here is my primary oocyte. We'll put it like that, primary oocyte. Just to give you an idea of some of the, the, the structures involved here, this is the follicle, and the follicle, when, 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 you guys, you know, if, if, if you're at that point in the course where you need to know about the menstrual cycle, you may want to jump to there after this lecture. After this lecture. Um, but what you're going to do is this follicle is going to swell and swell and swell, and out comes the secondary oocyte. All right, so that's, that's that situation where they're still doubled. Then, just as a little side, the follicle turns into this thing called the corpus luteum, which those of you familiar with the menstrual cycle know all about. That's another story. All right, but anyway, here we go. So there's, there's the secondary oocyte. Let's take a look at it. Where's the polar body? It's gone. Forget it. It's little. Okay. All right, but look, what's going to happen next? Let's say fertilization occurs. If fertilization occurs, an interesting thing happens. Meiosis gets finished. And we get the structure called an ovum, Latin for egg. But guess what? In that second division, you get still another polar body. So once again, let's see what happens. All right, if, if so we'll, we'll go through the two end thing. Okay, all right, primary oocyte. We're gonna go through our first meiotic division polar body, okay? Polar body, actually, they, they, they probably, before they degrade, will, will, will in turn split, but that's not important because that polar body is history. It's, no, it's of no use. But now, if this thing here with its double chromosomes will now, if fertilization occurs, if fertilization, that's a sperm, if fertilization occurs, what's going to happen next is we're going to get that and that. This will be N. If fertilization doesn't occur, this doesn't happen. I want to ask you a question. Why? Why does a female pop off these polar bodies as useless bits of genetic information and reabsorb them? When indeed, she may in fact, I mean, if, if we're talking about natural selection, wouldn't it be selected to have more eggs? That, and, and that might propagate your genes even better? Because if you pop a bunch of eggs out, well, you're much more likely to be fertilized, right? Trade-off time. And there's lots of trade-offs in evolution. I have a question for you. What has to happen to this zygote, this fertilized egg? Now, there's a zygote and three polar bodies. Here's what, or excuse me, an ovum and three polar bodies. There's perhaps what four equal eggs would look like. Which one is more likely to contain enough material to nourish a zygote? That's your answer. See, what that egg has done is by preserving cytoplasm, it has allowed the, the zygote nourishment for the first stages of development. And as you know, in humans, that eventually goes away because we hook up with an umbilical cord and a placenta. But until that time, until that, that, that zygote has a source of nutrients or that embryo has a source of nutrients, the cytoplasm of the egg. And so you see eugenesis 
is very different than spermatogenesis, but sperm don't care. Eggs, sadly being the mother, have to nourish the child much longer than the genetic carrier of the sperm.